back to my channel and to episode two of the Booklog Chronicles. So today I'm going to be talking about the um, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder trilogy. I just finished the last book um, last night, yesterday evening, and I sat down and took some notes. So yes, this is going to be spoiler free, by the way. Um, I'm going to try and like rein myself in and I specifically took notes to not give anything away while still giving my thoughts on things, if that makes sense. So, um, yeah, like I said, no spoilers and I'm just gonna kind of be going over them, like the premise of the story and then um, just kind of like my review on each individual book and then um, a review on the series as a whole. So, um, as you saw, I made a coffee today. This is an iced garden latte. Um, I got this recipe from a local coffee shop, like one of my favorite coffee shops. Um, and they bring this drink out like every spring and summer season and I love it. So it's, um, you guys saw I put in honey and that like syrupy thing was, um, homemade rosemary syrup. I know it sounds super strange and... I don't know, I personally like trying really unique drinks, so um, making a rosemary syrup is really easy, so I just found up uh, like a recipe on YouTube and I, it was really quick. So if you want to try it, I highly, highly recommend it if you want to try a new, unique, springy drink. <laughs> so um, yeah, anyways, I think I've babbled on long enough. Let's go ahead and get into it. So here we have the books themselves. This is the first book, the second book, and then the third book. And wow, you can see, if you can see all the tabs, there was a lot to tab and murder mysteries for me are a must tab, even if I don't end up keeping the book because I like to go back and like revisit some things as like we find out like new things about the characters or like new evidence. It just kind of helps me like reflect back and like really get the gears turning in my head. So um, yeah, it's, this is just a must have series. Like if you read this, you have to tab this because you're gonna want to revisit this. I'm just gonna go ahead and say that spoiler alert to my um, review on it. I'm not gonna get in it, into it too much right now. But you are going to want to reread this, I guarantee you. Um, okay, before I start rambling on, I'm going to kind of go over the general things about this. This is a trilogy by Holly Jackson, and it is a YA series, so it's going to be a little bit of an easier read, so to speak. Um, that said, there are still some things that I want to mention. Um, I will go ahead and put trigger warnings over here just because there are quite a few and big ones. So yeah, just kind of something to be aware of because those things are very prevalent throughout the entire series. So if that's not something that you are the most comfortable with reading about, um, then maybe stay away from this one just because it is kind of, I don't want to say, I don't want to give too much, but they're just very prevalent themes in this series. So kind of be aware of that. Um, but yeah, of course it's a murder mystery. And so now I'll kind of go into giving you some quick overviews of each book. And then I will go into my reviews on each individual book as we go through them. <laughs> so let's go ahead and do that. First book here, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. This story revolves around our main character, who is Pippa Fitzamobi, but throughout the book, she's kind of referred to as Pip. That's kind of the name that she goes by. Um, but yeah, she is a senior in high school and she looks back into a murder case that happened in her town of Fairview, Connecticut, um, five years in the past. So this is set around like, the crime happened around like 2014 
and so the like present day in this book is like 2019 um to like 2020 um so yeah she ha is doing like her final like senior project and that's what she decides to do her project on and honestly like you can see on the back of here it says this is a story of an investigation turned obsession so i would say that's very true she gets it very engrossed in that whole world of this crime and just trying to figure out what really happened because she doesn't believe that um who was accused and ultimately like blamed for the crime is the one who actually did it so the crime that happened um a senior in high school andy bell was murdered supposedly by her boyfriend sal singh and they kind of ran off that he killed her because there was just so much evidence against him but there's a lot of the whole police system and justice system just completely failing it's a small town so things like that kind of happen um but yeah so they just kind of write it off he killed her life goes on right but Pip doesn't believe that and so she goes and looks into everything and she interviews a bunch of people and it's just an awesome awesome ride I think the only con that I will say with this one and honestly with all three of the books is that she Pip is a very um she's a very feisty girl and we love that <laughs> i love that her personality is amazing she's a girl boss however there are times when she will do some things and i'm just like hold on like that's a little it kind of crosses the line between good and bad but honestly i think that is kind of the case or like the point of this entire story so i can't even really call that a con but yeah for sure there were just times when i was like oh like i i definitely would not do that like just completely running towards danger and sometimes it seems a bit unreal unrealistic but it makes it works with the story so that is this one so the second book Good Girl, Bad Blood. This one, it was my least favorite of the three, but that's not to say that this was a bad book by any means. This, oh my gosh, this, I will say, is probably the most emotional book in the series. And so, yeah, just brace yourself when you're gonna read this one. It's very heavy, it's very hard hitting. So this one, we are still with Pip and the same kind of like cast of characters that we get introduced to in the first book and this is revolving around the disappearance of Jamie Reynolds which is the older brother of one of Pip's friends, um, one of her close friends so she kind of feels this obligation to help find him. So in that first book she was looking into a case that already had been resolved and this one she is following a case that is ongoing and that is currently um you know happening and the police are trying to find the person so yes jamie reynolds goes missing and so she's trying to help the reynolds family track him down and help him um get back home safely so that's kind of what this book is about like I said, this was not, this was my least favorite of the um, three, however, still awesome, 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 awesome book. And yeah, we get introduced to some new characters in this one as well, like Jamie Reynolds. We don't really hear much about him in the first book. Um, I think we kind of, like, we know about him, but in this book it kind of revolves around him since she's trying to um find him since he went missing so 
that leads me to the last book. So let me go ahead and grab that coffee break first though. Third and last book, As Good As Dead. Oh my goodness, this, it, it even says on the back here, a stellar finale to a knockout series. That is absolutely true. This, how she writes Holly Black is just incredibly, like, I've never been able to use the, like, phrase devilishly clever, like, in a more fitting way. This is just, it's so good. Anyway, I'm gonna get into my whole review right now. What is this book about? This, as good as dead, is about Pip trying to solve one last mystery, and that is her own. So, through the events of the first and second book, she comes to find that she has a stalker. So, it is very, this is a very scary book, um, just because the events are kind of un, you know, unraveling before her and the things are happening directly to the main character. So you just feel all that emotion. So this is another very, 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 very hard hitting one. Um, yeah, I, as soon as I, even now I'm like, I'm still thinking about this. I am still speechless, just absolutely mind blown. Um, so yeah, that's what this one is about. I really enjoyed this series. I'm going to go ahead and get into my overall thoughts and my ratings. So let me grab all the books here and we will get into the ratings. So the first book, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, five out of five stars. This was just such a good book and such a good first book. And even though I had the couple of issues with it, it's still like it wrapped everything up so well so that if you wanted to just read this first one, you could. Like the how she writes each book, it feels like its own separate thing. Like it's not like one continuous like long story. I mean it is but you could read this on its own if you want. But what I love about this is that all three are so connected. All three books are just so interwoven with each other and it's just the right amount of complex. Even this book alone, it's just the right amount of twists and turns and it had me guessing the entire time. So yes, five out of five stars for the first book. The second book, Good Girl, Bad Blood. I gave this a four stars. Four stars. I gave it four stars. <laughs> um, yeah, not. it's my least favorite of the series, but it's still an amazing book. I mean, four out of five stars, that's still amazing. Um, yeah, it just, very emotional book. Great, great book. Very necessary. This is a very necessary book to read in the series, I will say. Um, but yeah, that's my rating for this one. And then the last book, As Good As Dead, um, six out of five stars. This is my favorite. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. The last book is my favorite. All three are amazing, but this one just, it's it really makes you feel every single emotion, like every single emotion imaginable. I felt while reading this book. <laughs> so anytime a book can make me feel that, it's automatically gonna get like six out of five stars. Like if that were possible, like this would be the first book I would give six out of five stars to. This was just such an amazing book and such a great way to wrap up the trilogy. I had no qualms about the ending at all. I think it ended really well. I was really like satisfied with the ending. Like I teared up at the end just because I was so just overwhelmed with everything that has happened. And it was, it was so beautifully done. Holly Jackson, like 
round of applause to her. She did so good with this one. I cannot stress that enough. Let me just grab all three books now and give you my overall rating. A Good Girl's Guide to Murder trilogy. Five out of five stars series. Like, it's it's amazing. If you like this sort of genre, I 100% recommend it. It's just so smart. It's how she writes this. It keeps you guessing all the way through. Just everybody is not what they seem. And like on the last book, it's like you'll never think of good girls the same again. And that's so true. Like you just, you get to know so much about all of these characters. And yeah, it, it even like makes you think about yourself. Like it's a very like self-reflective book. I feel like even though it's like a fictional book, I feel like it really makes you reflect a lot and makes you think about life and just all of these decisions that we make that lead to like where we are now and how like one small decision can really change your entire life which is sometimes a scary thought but anytime I get scared by a thought like that I try to turn it into something positive because then if I get scared I just shut down and anyways why is this turning into a whole therapy session there you get to see inside my mind now um, but anyways, let me wrap this up because I am rambling. I feel like maybe I should have waited to film this when I was less, like, in a fever dream about this series. Um, but yeah, like I said, five out of five stars for this series. Um, go read it. If you have not read it or if you need to finish reading it, go finish reading it now. Now. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's it. That's it. Five out of five stars. You need to read this. Highly, highly recommend it. Such a good series. And I'm gonna go reread it right now. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm, I'm gonna try and give it some time before I reread it because I want to kind of forget some details. Although I don't, I think this is gonna stick with me like forever. It's just one of those series that it just hits you so hard. I don't think I'm gonna forget it at all. So yeah that's this this series and the end of episode two of the book vlog chronicles I had to think about that for a second um but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed if you've read this series let me know what your thoughts on it are in the comments i love talking to you guys in the comments so um yeah that is the end of this video i hope you guys are having a great day and thank you for spending some of your time with me i will see you guys next week bye guys